Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. So here on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, over the last several years, I have been reviewing the short fiction of author HP Lovecraft. More recently, I've been working on re reviewing collaborations that he did. Today's story was a collaboration with Dwayne W. Rimmel. It was written in 1934, published not until 1940 um, in Polaris, and it is called The Tree on the Hill. Up front, just going to tell you, it's another stinker. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't continue watching my video, uh, but just be forewarned, not one of his greatest stories. There, you've heard it. All right, so the way that these <laughs> reviews work is that I do a brief synopsis of what happens in this story, and then I wrap up with my sort of thoughts and feelings about what it all means, why it's a stinker in this case, and then hopefully uh, help you to uh, enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the story a little bit more. All right, um... The narrator is staying with a friend in the town of Hamden in the Pacific Northwest. He goes for a walk in the woods to a place called Hell's Acres, where on an otherwise barren hilltop, he finds a tree that seems very much out of place. He takes a bunch of photographs of the tree, and then he falls asleep under it. Having a daydream, uh, he sees a temple under three suns and feels himself drawn to look inside it, where he sees three flaming eyes in the darkness looking out at him, trying to draw him in. He wakes up soon, um, but he's miles away from where he laid down to sleep, and his toes, uh, clothes are torn as if he'd crawled some distance to get there, so obviously something weird is going on here. He returns home to his friend uh, Theonis, who is uh, by chance researching ancient Egyptian mythology. Uh, they take the pictures, they get them developed, and then a few weeks later when they see them, they decide that there's something wrong with all of them, especially the one, the main picture of the tree. It seems as everything has like three shadows, um, and then he remembers that there was in fact three suns in the sky <laughs> when he was in his daydream. Uh, Theonis then tells him a legend about an malevolent alien force repelled by an Egyptian priest in the year of the Black Goat um, using a certain gem. Uh, the gem, as it turns out, has been rediscovered recently. Uh, Theonis acquires it using his credentials as a scholar and uses it on the pictures. Uh, while examining the pictures with it, um, a Caesar strikes him and he suddenly falls down, not dead, but unconscious. Uh, when he wakes up in the hospital, uh, the narrator goes to visit him. Uh, Theonis uh, instructs the narr narrator to destroy the pictures and to lock the gem away again in case it's needed one day um, when the year of the goat, black goat comes around again. But don't worry because I've, I've banished this uh, being, this malevolent creature, just like the Egyptian priests of old once did. The narrator follows the directions, uh, but uh, in, in the process of destroying the pictures and locking away the gem, he finds a sketch that Theonis made laying on the desk, and it seems to depict in the place of the tree a big weird claw reaching out um, towards the ground ahead of it in a spot that appears as if someone had recently just laid down there, perhaps him. All right, so, um, yeah, not one of the great ones. And it has nothing to do with the the content or the nature of the story. Uh, it, it's a great setup. Um, cool location, cool tree. Um, the experience of being whisked away in a dream to this weird place. All intriguing stuff. Also, this idea of sort of unseen beings and dimensions being very much in our place, but... Um, somehow out of phase where we can't see them except for perhaps in dreams and in special places like the hill where the tree resides. But the story quickly goes off the rails. Um, it relies way too much on coincidence. Um, remarkably, uh, Theonis has all this knowledge about um, this obscure Egyptian myth and he has the ability to get a hold of this gem, which has only recently been found, and also happens to be the year of the black goat, and and all this. So wait, one too many, or way too many coincidences, rather, um, for any of it to work in a story of this length. Um, perhaps in a longer story, you might get away with it because you take the time to sort of better justify uh, these coincidences, but not here. Just none of it really works after that initial opening section of the story where he goes out, has this experience, and comes home and tells it to Theonis. Um, so um, the end result is it's a pretty lackluster story. Um, and then to sort of add insult to injury, um, it ends with that sort of 
um, thing that Lovecraft uses way too often, which is um, the the narrator sees something that's revelatory um, in the last line of a story, and it's sort of like, ah, oh, and then it ends. Um, he just uses that way too many times. Uh, we saw it a couple weeks ago with the... Um, uh, was it the horror in the museum um, with, you know, seeing the, the scene of uh, this deity, this god on the, on the eyes of the mummified um, priest. You know, it's, it just uses it over and over again. And this, this is why some of these stories are not counted among Lovecraft's best. So, um, you know, it's a half hour read. I suggest read everything once, um, you know, don't take my word for it. Um, at least give it that one chance. See if you can take away something good from it. But I don't think this is one that I'll be coming back to. And I don't think that you'll want to come back to it year after year like you may some of your favorites. So there you have it. The Tree on the Hill, 1934 and uh, published in 1940. Um, coming back here uh, next week and we will discuss the battle that entered the century. Until next time, keep it creepy. Thank you.